Hey guys, it is Miss Simrino. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you're brand new, I am very excited that you decided to join me here today for another speed build. And we are in Ciudad Inamorada and we are building a family home, finally. I have wanted to build a family home here since we got this new pack and I couldn't figure out a shape for the life of me until I found this inspiration picture on Pinterest. I was looking for a really simple shape that I would be able to achieve. And this one finally allowed me to sort something out. It still took a lot of time for me to do this, but I'm really proud of this build. I really like it. I wanted it to look as though it fit into the world, but it's not as colorful, I think, as I was originally intending. I wanted the exterior to be less vibrant. One of the main colors, like my favorite color is yellow. So I knew I wanted to have some yellow accents and whatnot on the exterior because I thought that would be such a nice color to go along with the purple trees that we got with this pack. I don't remember the exact name of the tree. And I believe though, am I, are purple and yellow complementary colors? I don't remember, but like gold and purple are colors that I see together all the time. So I thought it would look really nice is what I'm trying to get at. And I think I just struggle blending a bunch of different colors together. And maybe it's because of my G-Shade preset too. It's, it's very vibrant, like the colors really pop. So maybe it overwhelms me. I don't know. I struggle with using a lot of color in general. I usually pick like two or three colors to really use throughout a build. And I stick with that and that's it. Because if I start adding more colors, I get really overwhelmed. Maybe it overstimulates me, maybe that's my problem. But here I used a very simple color scheme on the exterior and inside we do get a little bit more colorful, which was really fun for me. I, I really enjoyed it. And the shape of this build is very simplistic. And I think that scared me a bit too, because it is quite literally just a couple of boxes put together and the roofing is something that intimidated me as well. There was just a lot going on here. The reference image was so simple. It's such a simple and beautiful shape and I was just afraid it wouldn't translate well to The Sims, but I think it did. So I can't wait to hear what you all think, but the shape itself is pretty much complete at this point. I played around with some platforming because I did use the medium wall height I think on both both the first and the second floor of this build. And I think I upped the platform by like three or four. And that includes the front porch here as well. So the very first floor looks as though I used the short wall height, but I didn't. And then upstairs, the walls are a little bit taller, but I also used platforming up there too. I think I upped it by only one because when you start messing with platforms upstairs, the stairs themselves work okay, but since I added these little balconies, I added this balcony in the front and I kind of mirror that on the back of the build as well, the, the door was kind of floating. And if I upped the platform on this little balcony, I had to change the shape of the roof. It was just, it was a lot. And I think I show a little bit of it on camera for you all at some point, but yeah, I played around with platforming to try to achieve a particular look. And I think I did it and I'm, I'm rambling like no other because it is a beautiful morning this morning. I've got my coffee and I think the caffeine's hitting. So I'm just like spitting words right now. Maybe I'm not making a lot of sense. I don't know. But the landscaping in the front is pretty much done at this point. That's just me kind of adjusting the platforms as I mentioned. And what was really great about using those platforms is that those little grass pieces that I placed down from the debug menu in Cottage Living, they now don't interfere with anything because I use the platforms and you can't even see them. They overlap with the build itself, but the platforms block them out, which was beautiful. And now I did add a back porch here. And again, I add one upstairs as well to kind of mirror the front. And it worked out perfectly with the floor plan upstairs because I believe the parents' bedroom, because this is for a family of five, I should probably mention, I think I did it for two parents, a teenager, a kid, and then two infants, <laughs> which is kind of a lot. But I think that this balcony upstairs is off of the primary bedroom, which is where the parents sleep. And then the front balcony is just accessed off the hallway upstairs. So anybody can access it, but at least there's like a private balcony for the parents, which I thought was kind of nice. So they could go out and hang out in their lounge chairs and just get away from all of their children. <laughs> They're all safe, but like just to get some relaxation time away from the kids and just like soak in some sun, you know? But we have moved on to the interior. And let me just say that sorting out this floor plan, it took me about three or four tries. This was the 
fourth try, I think, where I finally was like, yeah, this works. And I wanted to bring some more stone texture into this build because of like the stone tiles and stuff, like the terracotta tiles that we have for the stairs and everything and for some of the flooring in here. I thought it would look really nice. I liked how it looked. It might look a bit off to you, I'm not sure, but it's from the Castle Estate kit, which I thought was really, really fun. I really liked it. I thought it looked nice and it was a little bit different than just the wood archways that I constantly use. So it was a nice little deviation, if you will. And I used these doors from the new pack. Is it really new at this point? Yeah, it's still new. From the Love Shark expansion pack, I know they have a little window in them, but I use them for all the bedrooms and the bathrooms. Don't worry about it. Your Sims can't see inside of it. Don't, don't worry about it. Privacy, who needs it? We don't need it. It's fine. If you want to change the doors, you can. But I liked the look of them, so I'm going to keep them in here. But as you can see, we're working on the entryway, which I spent a lot of time on for some reason. I think it's because I was just a bit... I was a bit unnerved by the style I wanted to go for inside. I wasn't sure, like I knew I wanted it to be colorful, but I was trying to pick only a couple of colors to work with and I end up deviating from that pretty quickly. I also just didn't want it to look too busy. I don't know, I, I was just struggling here. I really was and I, I didn't know what room to start with, which is why I did the entryway first. I think it's because the living room is so big. It intimidated the heck out of me. It's a huge living room. And I have to admit, it is not my favorite living room that I've ever done. It's not, I really do like it, but it's not my favorite thing. It's just so big. I was trying to figure out a way to separate it to make like a formal dining room and a living room. But the way that I had sorted out the rest of the floor plan, I didn't want to adjust it. And I felt like I had to, to be able to split that room up and I just couldn't do it. I could not do it. And the kitchen was pretty big too. This is probably one of my bigger kitchens, which was also super intimidating. This is why I make like smaller builds because I can't, I can't fill the space. I can't fill the large spaces. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> I have no idea what to do with them. So this was really difficult for me as well. What I end up doing is I get rid of that tall cabinet that I just placed there and I do put another door. So there's actually two doors that go into the three quarter bath, which is what that's gonna be to the left hand side. And the bathroom near the front door off the entryway is actually a half bath, even though they're the same size. It had to do with where the doors were placed, that, that's all. And I do furnish those off camera just because I one, forgot that I wasn't recording. And two, once I realized I wasn't recording, I didn't really care that much because they are just bathrooms. They're, they're kind of boring. There's nothing really special about them. And the build is long enough, so I figured it wasn't a big deal. Hopefully that doesn't upset anybody, but I did not record um, the bathrooms downstairs. I may not have recorded the one upstairs either. So it is, I should probably say this too. It's a four bed, three bath. And I think one of those bathrooms is a full bathroom, which means there's a shower tub combo because of course I did make a room for infants. So eventually you'll have toddlers and you have to bathe infants and toddlers, so it'll work. Then there's a three quarter bath downstairs as well as a half bath. So you've got some variety and with a big enough household, you do need some more space like that. You need some more bathrooms. I always stand by that. So there we have the bathrooms furnished. I did originally make this kind of like a laundry room, but I do change it to a three quarter bath, which you'll see in the screenshots. Because you know what? I was thinking of my own gameplay. And even though I usually like having laundry in my builds when I play with The Sims, I wasn't feeling it. When I was doing this build, I was like, no, I don't wanna do the laundry. <laughs> I don't wanna have my Sims do the laundry and I don't wanna place a hamper in every single bedroom. Not today, mm -mm. nope. So I get rid of the washer and dryer. Bye, ditched, out of here. <laughs> and here we're just working on the other hallway, which I thought was really nice. I mean, it's just a hallway, but it was pretty enough. And it does lead into the giant, and I mean giant living space, the giant living room. There's like two couches. I think I have a don't wake the llama table. There's two bookshelves from the Crystal Creations kit. I keep thinking they're from the book note kit. I keep mixing those up for some reason, just with the bookshelf items that we have. But yes, this is gonna be the living space. It is huge. And that's why I struggled with how to lay this out. I really didn't know what I wanted in here. I didn't want it littered with kids activities and things like that. It just wasn't the style I was going for this time. So I struggled to fill all of the space. And I did use a different wallpaper in here. I ended up using the wallpaper from, oh no, what's it called? The Cozy Bistro Kit, because a lot of the items that we got with Lovestruck have kind of like an art deco feel to them. 
and the wallpaper is very Art Deco. I feel like a lot of the objects from like high school years, um, Love Struck and the Cozy Bistro kit would go really, really well together. I feel like you could finagle something with those packs. I, I think it could be really fun. So I end up using that wallpaper in here because it adds a little bit of texture and pattern to the walls. Because since I used the platforming tool in here, you can't really see the wainscoting with this wallpaper I currently have from Parenthood, which is kind of a bummer. And I also think it's kind of interesting because it, when you put that wallpaper on the stairs, even with using platforming, it's normal, if you will, on the stairs, but not on the platform walls. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's just, it looks a little bit different, that's all. And you'll also notice in the screenshots, I do flip this living room just a little bit. I flip where the couches are. So right now, they're kind of open to where the bookcases are, but I flip them. So they're closed off to where the bookcases are and it's open to where the Don't Wake the Llama table is. And like I mentioned, I struggled with this living room so much because it was so big. It felt like it was getting too cluttered and yet it wasn't cluttered or furnished enough for me. It was a real, it was a real struggle, which is why I did some changes off camera, which again, you will see in the screenshots. And of course, if you download the build, it will look as it did in the screenshots compared to what you are seeing right now in the living room. <laughs> But yes, it was very difficult. It really was. Um, I did use a bunch of different wood tones, I think, throughout this build as well. I kind of mix and matched a few different things, but I like the way it turned out. I usually gravitate towards kind of those vanilla and honey woods, but I'm really enjoying kind of this, I wouldn't call it a cherry wood because it's not really red, but it's kind of like a deep burnt color. Is that fair to say? I don't really know. I have no idea, but I guess it kind of has some red tones to it, which is why I ended up using the couches that I did with those red, like the deep red pillows on them from Growing Together. And if you are wondering, that clock in the corner used to always cause routing issues for me if I placed it with move objects on, but I did play test this build and you can walk around to the Don't Wake the Llama table and the couches and stuff, even with that clock sticking in the corner. I was so happy with that. I also used this wallpaper from the Cozy Bistro kit, looping back to that, because it does have a detail at the top of the wallpaper as well, which I feel like made the space feel a bit cozier and a little less big. It felt more closed in, which is kind of what I was going for. And I think with these darker wood tones, I also loved using these black curtains because it just pulls all those dark tones together. It was really a balancing act here that I don't know if I fully achieved, you all can tell me, but it was a big space to fill. I didn't know what to do with it, but I liked the end result enough. I don't, I don't know, it sounds like I don't like it. I do, it's just not my favorite living room because I really, I'm feeling insecure about it. I struggled with it. But now we move back to the kitchen because I realized I did not clutter it at all. No, I did not. I didn't add extra appliances, clutter, or anything. So we go back and do that quickly as well. Now, since this is a family of five, I realize that with the bar height table that I have here, there really isn't going to be enough room for the entire family to sit and have a meal. You can make an adjustment if you wanna get rid of that island where the sink is and plop it on another countertop and add a bigger table, go for it. I do add a high chair kind of in the corner of that room off camera, so one of the infants can be in the high chair at that time. I don't know, I just added a detail as kind of an afterthought. But now we are moving on to the second floor and this is where all the bedrooms are with one, and I mean only one additional bathroom. Is there room to add a second bathroom if you wanted to? Absolutely, I think you could finagle it if that's what you wanted to do. But I decided to just have the one bathroom to keep things pretty, pretty open. I mean, all of the rooms are kind of closed off, but I have that one long hallway where you have access to all the bedrooms and then it leads right to the end where you can get to the balcony in the front of the build. So I thought that was kind of nice. I did play around with lowering the platform in the living room and I really didn't like it because unfortunately that archway then floats. Really didn't like how it looked, but the first room we work on is the primary bedroom and that has like a very red theme, which was not my intention at all. <laughs> I was gonna try to stick with kind of like the blues and the yellows throughout the entire build, but once I got to the bedrooms, I tossed that out the window really quick. I did, I, I kind of kept the same wood tones that I had in the living room for the primary bedroom, but it's, it's kind of red and blue actually. Yeah, it's red and blue because I used these curtains from, are those from high school years? Yeah, they're from high school years. So I use a mix. I use some of the curtains from For Rent and then some of them from high school years. 
because I really liked kind of the sheerness of these curtains and like the smaller details. And they just kind of fit the vibe I was going for, which was very like breezy and airy for this particular build. I struggled with the layout of this primary bedroom so much. And I add a bookcase over in the left-hand corner and I showed my husband and he was like, that's perfect. It looks perfect. And I was like, no, I don't like it. And I end up putting a vanity there. And he's like, you can't, you can't put that vanity there. The wood swatches don't match. And I was like, get out. <laughs> I was like, get out of my ear because you were just, you're feeding into the, fa I get so self-conscious when I don't match wood tones. Like, bless him. He, he is very matchy matchy when it comes to looking at my build. He's like, yes, it's perfect because everything matches. I'm like, yes, exactly. Thank you. The second I used a wood tone that didn't match, he was like, wait, wait, no, put the bookcase back. It was perfect. Why did you do that? <laughs> I was laughing so much. And I was like, don't, I was like, don't look over my shoulder. Go away. Like, don't, don't comment on my builds. <laughs> and then I showed him afterwards and he was like, yeah, it's perfect. Actually, you're right. Like, Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I also added... <laughs> I don't know why it's making me laugh so much. I also added a fan in the primary bedroom, which I didn't add in every single bedroom. I think I have a fan in like the entryway and the hallway downstairs, but not in every bedroom. I also added a mirror here above the bed. It looks a little bit wonky because it's almost a bit tall for where the headboard is, but I kind of just skirted over it. I was gonna use the other mirror that we got with Lovestruck, but it was way too big. It was way too big, the horizontal mirror. I, I couldn't do it, but the primary bedroom is done. I quickly put some lounge chairs here on the little private balcony that they have, which I thought was really nice, as well as some plants in the corner. I didn't want the balconies to look too busy. That was something I was trying to be mindful of because I didn't want it to take away from the very simplistic look of the exterior, which I thought was pretty enough. So I didn't want it to look cluttered or busy. So I kept it very, very simple out on the balcony, even the one on the back, <laughs> which is this one. So I just had the lounge chairs and then I just quickly tried to figure out what the backyard was gonna look like. I was gonna use this little pergola from, I think that was added to base game, but I do end up getting rid of it and I add a little pool because I just haven't built pools with the rounded corners yet and I wanted to, so I did. And now here's gonna be the teens room. I went very colorful, I think, in this room in particular. I used a lot of yellows, this kind of like salmon-y pink, some light blue, some dark blues. And I also used this wallpaper again from the Cozy Bistro kit in the yellow because it was so pretty and it added some texture to the walls. And then I used, it's I think a wall decal from Lovestruck. I want to say it is, and I sized it up a little bit using the tool mod, and I pushed the metal headboard from this bed into the wall to make this little decal look like a faux headboard. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I thought it looked so nice, and the colors matched perfectly. I was so pleased with it. I thought it looked really cool, and it just made the bed, I think, a little bit unique compared to what it was. I love this bed so much, and I love the metal frame and the headboard and the footboard and stuff like that, but I thought it looked really pretty with that decal on the wall. And I was thinking that this teen, I didn't give a ton of thought into the teen's interest, but I think that they like to work out. They like to lift weights specifically. It's their thing. Strength training is their thing. I should have added the yoga mat and kettleball um, like clutter item from the everyday clutter kit, but I forgot. But I did add the rack of weights from the Love Struck expansion pack, which I have finally learned is not a functional item, which really bums me out. If that information I got is incorrect, because I didn't try to play test that single item, if that's incorrect, let me know. But I believe they're not functional, and that is probably one of the most devastating things I've learned about the new expansion pack. I, I cannot lie, that is, listen, listen, when they advertised this pack and they were like advertising Cupid's Corner and we saw a sim like lifting weights in their little Cupid's Corner picture, I was so excited. Cause I was like, oh my God, we can actually just lift individual weights now. And that's not the case. So I was pretty, I was bummed and also a little irritated by that because that was, listen, that was straight up false advertising in my opinion. It was, it bums me out. I know that we've had, I think there's a modder that has since made them functional, but I believe that includes like custom animations and stuff, which is wild, wild to me. It's incredible, but wild. Um, I also added an ocelot. That's how, is that how you pronounce that? An ocelot? Yes, right? An ocelot, yeah. <laughs> I added one of those to the little bookshelf as well as the little uh, decorative item as well. So I feel like this team just loves their ocelot. 
That's all. I, I hope you don't have to like feed and take care of them because I don't know if they'd be accessible in that bookcase. I didn't play test that part. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm realizing there are some things here that I just didn't play test. So I apologize. I play test that you didn't have any routing issues that you could access like the bed, you could cook in the kitchen, you could use the bathroom, stuff like that. But there are certainly some items that I didn't play test. So my sincerest apologies, hope it all works. And if not, um, sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> but the teens room is pretty much done. This is gonna be the kids room. And I feel like this kid just loves dinosaurs and they love science. That's about as far as I got. They love dinosaurs and science because there are some dinosaur details in this room. And I did give them the little like kid chemistry station thing because I never get to use it. It's always too big and it looks in the way usually and I don't like it, but I used it here because I, darn it, I wanted to. I wanted to use something a bit different. I always place the creativity table. So I thought I would use the little chemistry station this time. There's also a stuffed dinosaur toy and I know I place it somewhere where the kid cannot access it. I'm aware of this. I know this. So you will have to move it if you want them to use it. That was very rhymey. Didn't mean for that to happen. <laughs> But yes, we went for a very dark blue and orange color scheme in here. Now, blue and orange, I love that color combination, but I usually go like teal bright blue with orange. And I kind of muted those colors, I think, in the scheme that I picked for this room, which was really nice. I thought it was a lot calmer. It was less of a vibrant, bright in your face kids room. It was a little bit softer but still very much felt like a kid's room. You know what I mean? That was kind of my goal. So here's the chemistry station. I do leave it there, but I moved that poster to a different wall. I kind of struggled with the layout of this room and I'm not quite sure why. I think it was because of the chemistry station because I was like, I want to use it. And it has to go on this wall because it's pretty much the only wall that I feel like it'll work. And I just didn't know what else to do with the space, but I added a mirror here. We've got the standing dresser and I was gonna use these little cube organizers from high school years that I typically use in rooms when I don't know what else to put in them, especially for like kid and teen rooms. But I ended up not doing that. I tried to use this little seat from the kids room stuff pack, but I got rid of that too. I put a faux, yes, very important, a faux hamper. And then I also added, what else did I add next to the faux hamper? I think like another toy or something like that, or this beanbag chair originally, but I moved that to the other side of the room. It was it was all about balance yet again. I didn't really know what to do with it, but I also added the Void Critter Station, which I was thrilled with. I've been trying to add that more in my kids' rooms because it's an item that I actually love playing with. And I always forget that it exists because it's bigger and you can't really fit it in a lot of places. So I use the Chemistry Station and I use the Void Critter Station. And I was so happy that I did. Now here's the infant's room. It is very plainly decorated. I did not go overly cutesy with this. I kept it very simplistic. That way when you have to make adjustments for whenever these infants become toddlers, you can do so very easily and not have to strip back a ton of decorations. I just went for a color. And that was like this dark green. This kind of like dark tealy green color. That's what I did. And that's about it. We have a changing table. We've got the two cribs. We have a little like side table just between the two cribs, the night lights above it. And I think I added a very plain piece of artwork there, that one from base game. And then I added the little like handprint artwork from Growing Together and this rocking chair in the corner. Maybe that little faux uh, crate, if you will, or like basket of toys. And that's it. There's, I think a play mat too, like the infant play mat. Then we move on to the backyard and on the back porch here, as you can see, I've got a outside dining table, some more decorative plants. I add a grill. We've got the trash can, which I think I moved to another side of the pool actually. And I think I decorate that front porch off camera. There's like a couple of benches and a chess table. It's just another lounge area. There's just so many porches. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with said porches. I also added a fan out here. I thought that was kind of a nice touch to actually get some air moving around if you're outside on a hot day. I added a swing set for when the, for, well, for the kiddo and for when the infants are older. And then we've got the little teeny tiny pool and a couple more lounge chairs. And I work on the landscaping and wrap that up in the backyard. But that is pretty much it for this build. I hope you all enjoyed this one. I can't wait to hear your thoughts and I will catch you next time I post a video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.